Well, it's time now for our panel of party commentators. With us this week, Susan Smith, a liberal commentator. Tim Powers is a conservative commentator. And joining us this week, Hal Belanger is an NDP commentator. Good to see you all. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Let's, we have a number of things to cover, but let's, let's start with the, uh, the report for the Parliamentary Budget Officer today. Uh, saying that the government would essentially uh, have to implement a carbon tax five times higher than it is today uh, by 2030 to be able to reach the Paris climate targets. And the Environment Minister coming out today and saying, yeah, not so. We won't need to raise carbon taxes at all. We've got a plan. The PBO failed to consider all the other things we're doing. And I guess let's start there with how does this complicate the conversation if we have the parliamentary budget officer saying you can't do it without doing this. The government says, no, we're doing other things that you didn't account for. Uh, but the government hasn't identified exactly how those other things they're doing will reduce emissions. And so where does that leave Canadians? You got the PBO saying you got to hike carbon taxes. The government says, no, we don't. Who would like to start? <laughs> uh, if people are paying attention to the parliamentary budget officer, it will cause confusion. They likely are not, but the opposition will be paying attention to the parliamentary budget officer. Well, they already are, sure. Said. And so they will happily, um, I think, continue to sow that confusion if it's there. Uh, I think it presume. I, th I think Canadians are smart enough to know no one initiative is going to help the country meet their car our carbon goals or the Paris climate goals. But I think Canadians want to know that the government has a plan and that their leaders are doing something about it. So. For the people who are focusing on that, they'll look at what the NDP has said they're going to do with regards to uh, carbon and reducing emissions. They'll look at what the Liberals have said they're going to do and what they are doing, actually. And they'll look at what the Conservatives are doing. Oh, wait, we don't know yet. So coming That's um, coming next week. <laughs> coming, next get week. the drum roll out. Still coming get soon. Get the drum roll out. I think, um, I think people will look at the issues, you know, when they look at single-use plastics, they'll look at the carbon, the price on carbon, they'll look at other initiatives that are taking place, and they'll look at a big picture, because they don't but, realize but, it's just one but, thing. But as the PBO put it to, what he, what he said to me in our, in our conversation, what the government's essentially saying here is, you know, we have these other measures, we haven't, he said, that he looked at these other measures, but the Environment Department has, as he said, behaved prudently by saying, we haven't actually identified a, an estimate for how much greenhouse gas emissions they'll actually reduce these other things but we'll sure we're sure they'll they'll help us meet our target and I think is, isn't that part of the confusion as you say we're doing all these things in his words he said the government's really telling Canadians trust us we have mm -hmm. a plan we haven't scoped it all out and uh, and how it's going to make us meet our targets but trust us is that, that okay that always goes well too for any government <laughs> when they say trust us I guess uh, let me take a little bit of a different uh, tack than Susan. Um, there has been, whether you're for the carb carbon pricing, carbon tax, or you're against it, there has been a critique, not just from the Conservatives, but from others now reinforced by the PBO, that it's actually going to cost more than the government has said it would. That's a problem for the government because they now have to explain where, how they're going to, uh, is the price going to go up, what impact is it going to have, new taxation, et cetera, et cetera. That's not a debate they want to have. They have to be careful with the PBO because they've afforded the PBO some credibility on the other issue we're going to talk about today, pharmacare, and on, on the auditing practices of the PBO. So they can't dismiss the PBO out of hand. It makes it more complicated. Susan is right. Shear is, is vulnerable until next week when he uh, is apparently going to come down and give us some sense of what his environmental policy is. Which I think is going to be a plan he heavily focused on what Canada can do in other countries to, to claim some cred back here by helping other countries get off coal. and. Right, uh, and the argument that, I mean, it may be, I don't know, I haven't yeah. seen the plan, but the, the argument has always Nobody been. Nobody has, Tim. <laughs> well, He's there are from a few. The there are a, few. a couple of people have it. But, but the problem with this, <laughs> again, is what is the cost to individuals right. and is it offset by the uh, environmental remediation or savings that it's going to bring forward? Carl? I'll give you a little scoop. Oh, Canada is not going to meet its Paris Come target. On, no. It's not happening. Come on. Canada did not meet Kyoto. We won't meet Paris. Never met any. Uh, and those targets, by the way, were established by Stephen Harper, and we won't meet them. Uh, that's what the PBO essentially said today, and the government's response basically con confirmed it, because there's no political will to do what needs to be done. Um, so we go with, uh, you know, cosmetic measures where we uh, impose a carbon tax, but we have uh, an exemption for the biggest polluters to the tune of 90%. So it doesn't make any sense, but that's the way it goes. And uh, unless uh, all parties take this seriously and work together, we, it won't happen, because there's too much, uh, it's too easy 
easy to go and talk about taxation and a tax on everything when at the, the, the very basic element of this plan was actually a conservative idea back 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 in the days uh, but right now we are you know it's retail politics at its worst uh, and we're playing on on people's uh, you know very simple fear okay. of paying more Let's for you know basic goods let's pivot to the to the pharmacare uh, tim touched on it so are we going to have a are we going to have a universal publicly funded pharmacare plan that covers all canadians in this country in the next 5 years whatever it takes i mean i don't know 10 years is, <laughs> ten, 10 years 2027 is when the the expert panel says it ought to be in place and we should work on it between now and then i think the adjectives that you've chosen and that some were used by that expert panel are the, are the important ones is it going to be a universal um, taxpayer funded one mm -hmm. that covers all Canadians? I don't know. Uh, the government I would, still seems to be talking about filling gaps. Well, and I, to me, you're going to ask my personal opinion, that's the way I would go, but I'm not the expert on the, the numbers and the dollars on that. I think it's a it's clearly a gap that's missing in our Medicare system. There are people that can't afford their medication. They are getting sicker and they are costing our health care system more. We need to do something about that and we have the ability to do something about that. Is it going to be one big blanket that covers everybody? I don't know if that's where um, uh, the, the Liberals will come forward with a proposal on. What I am confident is it will be an active and robust uh, discussion and debate within the next election campaign. Most definitely, and, and the Liberals will come out with something. Be, right? It should be, right? Well, so I think so. I, I wish it would be, because it's a fair debate to have, and it should be a debate about the entirety of the system. But I think some of the early analysis is right, that there will be less debate and more uh, propagation by the liberals of this being about pharmacare is about defending the univer universal health care system that we have and instead of the good discussion that Susan started here we won't have any of that and any other suggestion will be diminished and frankly uh, conservative politicians politicians uh, within within the NDP and the Greens are and the liberals are all cowardly when it comes to actually talking about what's happening in the system uh, so it will be again a, de a point of demarcation not unlike 2000 the but the bigger issue is can we, if we go with some form of universal health care, uh, universal pharmacare, can we afford it based on what Dr. Hoskins has said? There's lots of data out there yeah. to say 20, it's 20% 20 of the people are potentially are falling through gaps. There's other data that says 98% of Canadians have some form of private or public care. So if those are the two real numbers as opposed to having to provide pharmacare but, but, for 100% I mean, of the I mean, the point the they were making that I, I'm not sure everybody, everybody fixes on the $15 billion price, the point they were making is the, the, at, no matter what we do, the cost of, of prescription drugs is going to continue to rise, and the concern of the, of the panel, Carl, was that there's, there will now become, sure, there's 20% 20, 20 of people may be falling through the gaps, uh, but that number will rise because of the price of prescription drugs. Workplaces will start either cutting drugs from the formulary or or uh, the premiums will be so high the workplaces won't be able to afford it. Exactly, and at the end of the day, do we want this to be the luck of the draw. If you happen to not have the right kind of jobs or the right kind of disease, you fall through the cracks and suddenly you either have to you know, mortgage your house or remortgage your house or sell your house or even worse in order to afford the drugs to save your lives. Uh, you know, that's the situation that we're seeing already. It's gonna get worse. And, and what's sad about this is that we, we've been talking about pharmacare since the 60s. I mean, Tommy Douglas was talking about it as the next frontier of universal health care and we're still debating it. The Liberals have it in the past, uh, in this uh, the last federal budget, they uh, they had a, a plan to have a plan to have a plan. Uh, I don't expect it will happen by the timeline set by the commission. Okay, but, but uh, also, I mean, but, but it's important. There's another element to this history, right? The provinces are going to be par have to be part and absolutely. parcel of it. They've been trying. You've covered them through numerous uh, provincial meetings to try and come up with just a common strategy on the bulk buying of drugs, mm -hmm. which would help reduce the cost. They haven't done that, and that arguably is a little bit easier than a national plan of the one. It would Dr. seem like a, certainly a place to start. About. It would seem like a place to start because, yeah. as a group, whether you have a national pharmacare plan or not, buying stuff as it's a the cost as a buying. group lowers it's the, the cost. That makes right. a lot of sense. The problem yeah. is, and this is where the, the the almost the sad part of this discussion in the frame and in the context of an election campaign is because the provinces have to be involved. I hope that the provinces don't play games with this. Um, currently, there are a number of premiers who, if the federal government, the liberals say, um, you know, black in Ottawa, they say white, or vice versa, and they oppose just because. And I hope in this very important conversation, because there are Canadians that 
get left behind, who get sicker, who do not get well, who miss work, who, you know, forfeit food to get drug, their medication and so on. We got to have this discussion. It'd be nice. It was out of the political context. I don't think it's going to be. We have very little time left, but I need some quick answers on on the relationship with China. Uh, we, the Chinese are now very clear. Release Meng Wanzhou, and maybe we, uh, the ice age in, re, in the relationship ends. Uh, Jean Chrétien is saying, yeah, we we. Well, the story is that Jean Chrétien is suggesting, yeah, maybe we should consider that. Stop the extradition process and get back in China's good books. What well, I was I was glad to hear Christian Freeland reject that notion today, right. uh, because uh, it doesn't make sense when you when you have uh, you know a bully take somebody hostage in order to get their way. Uh, if you respond, what does that mean? That means I'll do it again, and uh, we don't want that to happen. And we she, don't want and it. And she said today that would. Going down that road would put actually Canadians uh, in, held in other countries in, in peril, or that could be held in other countries because we'd be send, sending a signal that, over. Uh, <laughs> we, that the rule of law, the, maybe the rule part is kind of written in plasticine, like maybe it's a little bit <laughs> rubbery. But Tim? Yeah, hi Canada, this China calling. Sorry, we're not available. I think that's going to continue for a while. I think what does have to happen, there has to be a common national political front on this, whatever uh, choice is made. I think we have to look for, for some other point of leverage that hasn't yet come out, that is in Huawei, that is in uh, Meng Wanzhou, it has to be something else. Is there something Donald there? Trump. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's Great. The thanks, thanks, Peter. Yeah. That's going to help. Well, and Susan, thanks, thanks final to, review. let's remi remember that Trump kind of started this all, and he's the one that did the political linkage. The Prime Minister's going down to meet with him in, yep. in, on the 20th Next of June. Week, yeah. Hopefully, um, there may be can, some sense can be talked into Mr. Trump that way. We have a court process that's in place. Meng Wanzhou is under what I'd like to call mansion arrest. Um, it's not quite house Tough, arrest. Yeah. Uh, not quite, I think, what the conditions are. Canadians are the two Michaels and right. others are, are sitting in in Canada. It's got to get resolved. I think it will be through external measures. There's there. nothing like a good bromance with Trump to sort things out. Thank you.